So we've seen this story that's going around that aliens are living among us, like an astronaut thinks that we might be living with aliens. And it's, it's not that weird of an idea. Well, I guess it is kind of weird. But it's this idea of a shadow biosphere that that we think that all life on Earth is all related to each other. But maybe life formed multiple times here on the planet and it's still living with us. It's just microbial. And I've been fascinated by this idea for for a long time and I actually got a chance to meet with Professor Paul Davies at a conference and I was sort of explaining my fascination with the Fermi paradox and he was like, well, we could look for aliens here on Earth. We could be searching for a shadow biosphere and it's a great idea. So I decided to do an episode about it. Whenever I talk about the search for life in the universe and its emphasis on water, I get comments that scientists aren't being creative enough. Why does life rely on water? Couldn't there be life forms which are completely different from life on Earth? Isn't that the textbook definition of alien? Astrobiologists have only scratched the surface in their search for life in the universe, and they're going after the low hanging fruit. Since life on Earth can be found wherever there's water, why not check out the water on other worlds? And if that doesn't pan out, then they'll expand the search. But it's possible there are aliens living right here on Earth among us in a shadow biosphere. We just haven't detected them yet. Scientists have many definitions for what life is, but in general, it should be able to move, grow, eat, and reproduce. Of course, a fire has many of these characteristics and you wouldn't consider it alive. You know life when you see it. From the trees in the forest to the animals in the oceans and even the tiny creatures in pond water. Every life form on Earth contains roughly the same chemical building blocks, including DNA and RNA, and it's possible to trace back every creature to the last universal common ancestor who lived on Earth about 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago. But what if life arose more than once? using chemicals and methods which are completely different from DNA-based life. Finding it would be one of the most important discoveries in biology. It would be a shortcut to finding aliens since they've been living with us all along. But it's going to be tricky. They're probably really small. The methods of detecting and categorizing life are based on the common ways that all life on Earth functions from the food it consumes to the waste gases that it gives off. The vast majority of these life forms are microscopic. In 2004, the J. Craig Venter Institute sailed a ship around the world's oceans for two years, sampling as much of the Earth's ocean's microbes as they could. By sequencing the DNA of everything they could get their net on, they discovered millions of new genes and nearly 1,000 genomes for uncultivated lineages of microbes. But the trick was that they used DNA sequencing to find these microbes. If there was other life on Earth that didn't use DNA at all, it would be invisible to detection. If there is life on Earth that's not related to the DNA-based life that we see all around us, it would need to be microscopic, which makes it tough to find. It's estimated that there are a trillion microbial species on Earth, more than the number of stars in the Milky Way. How do you search for something that's unknown in a sample of life that big? In a 2009 paper called Signatures of a Shadow Biosphere, Professor Paul Davies from Arizona State University and other researchers described how we might go about looking for aliens among us. There are several forms this shadow biosphere could take. The first possibility is life that's completely ecologically separate. There could be life in an environment that's completely hostile to known life. So if you can find evidence of biological activity, you've got a compelling candidate for a shadow biosphere. There are many examples for signatures of life, like mineral deposits, fossils, or even just chemicals that are out of balance and being sustained by respiration. Imagine finding a thin film of life on top of flowing lava or some other environment that's so hostile to regular life that it's obviously different. It turns out life has been found in extreme environments completely separate from other life. There are entire ecosystems clustered around volcanic vents at the bottom of the ocean, which are completely separate 
from surface photosynthesis, but they're still related to us. The researchers suggest many places to look for separate ecosystems, such as dry deserts, ice sheets, hot vents, high altitudes, particles in the upper atmosphere, or extreme acidity. You could also create artificial environments by introducing toxins to DNA life, extreme temperatures, or replace water as a solvent with something else like ammonia. The second possibility is that we have an ecologically integrated shadow biosphere. These could be life forms that live in the same places as familiar life, but they use chemicals or nutrients ignored or underutilized. Familiar life uses 20 amino acids as building blocks out of the hundreds found in nature. The last possibility is that the other life is biochemically integrated with familiar life. It eats us, infects us, and vice versa. It might even transfer genetic information back and forth with us, making it incredibly difficult to identify. But the reality, of course, is that we just can't predict how alien life might work. That's the whole point. It's alien. All scientists can do is search for evidence that it exists and then work backward to figure out how it works. How could we search for this biosphere? I'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Alison Amos, Mark Shackelford, Charlie Livingston, Josh DeRoos, and the rest of our 854 patrons for their generous support. Want to get our videos a day early as well as bloopers and behind the scenes videos? Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today. In addition to searching for life as we know it on other worlds, astrobiologists are suggesting that we search for life as we don't know it here on Earth. That would be pretty convenient since we're already living here on Earth. And by finding life that operates in different ways from familiar life would give us clues for what to search for on other worlds. One of the most ambitious attempts to search for life on Mars was the Viking experiment which exposed Martian regolith to nutrients, warmth, and water, and then tried to detect outgassing from any microbes in the sample. The results, as I'm sure you're aware, were inconclusive. But that doesn't mean the experiment wasn't a good idea. It was just on Mars, millions of kilometers away, where it's tough to perform a careful experiment. Davies and his collaborators proposed doing a super Viking experiment here on Earth sampling environments which are known to be lethal to known life, and then trying to detect any chemical imbalance. They could be dramatic, like a buildup of xenon gas, but they could be subtle, like a rise in amino acids in a sample that don't match the known processes of life. You'd expect the samples to be contaminated by familiar life, but you'd be looking for patterns that don't match life's given properties. A super Viking experiment would be convenient to do here on Earth, but it would also be incredibly tricky to get compelling data because your samples are overrun with the clearly successful DNA-based life. Although the life itself might be difficult to detect, one idea could be to search for viral parasites that thrive on the alternative life forms. These would be distant relatives to us, but they'd evolve to infect and inhabit unrelated life forms. Since the oceans are teeming with viruses, the analysis that Craig Ventner did in the oceans might tease out a hint that they're there. Life uses DNA to store hereditary information from generation to generation, using four bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. But scientists have created artificial DNA that could have 12 bases arranged in six pairs. Our DNA sequencing technology is optimized for familiar life. But what about creating equipment that searches in bulk for every conceivable option? One of the biggest indications might be the chirality of life. For some reason, the molecules of life are left-handed. The molecules for life could come in two different mirror image configurations, but they don't. Everything we know uses this left-handed configuration. Maybe there's some underlying physical reason why this is the case, or Maybe it was just a fluke. The first life form figured it out, and then everything just followed from there. Finding organic molecules with right-handed chirality would be a huge clue. It might be possible to detect weird life by the way it uses unusual forms of energy. 
Ultraviolet radiation is streaming from the sun and it's lethal to life as we know it. Expose soil samples to ultraviolet and see what survives and thrives. One interesting field of interest is to find life that replaces familiar chemical elements with replacements to do the same task. Astrobiologists thought they might have found a candidate in a controversial study back in 2010, where a microbe was found thriving in a high arsenic condition at Mono Lake in California. The microbe was called GHAJ1 and had somehow replaced the role of phosphorus in its DNA with arsenic. This was an exciting discovery, but more research wasn't able to replicate the discovery. It turned out the microbe was still using phosphorus in its DNA. It was just highly resistant to arsenic. This is just one example of the kind of research that could be done to turn up more examples of extreme life. If some kind of alternative life form is really found here, how will we know that we're not actually related? It might seem alien, but push back and we could find an even earlier common ancestor. But the real prize would be the discovery of independent events where life formed on Earth. This would mean that life should be common wherever the conditions are appropriate. As soon as life could form on Earth, it did. But did it perform this feat several times with only one life form successfully outcompeting all the others? To find alien life, scientists have focused their attention on other worlds, both in the solar system and outside it. But the reality is that Earth itself has barely been explored for any other kind of life that have lived with us side by side for billions of years. What we discover here could tell an enormous amount about what we could expect to find out there. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here? Support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links so you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format so you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up right on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. We've done many episodes about the search for life in the universe, including searching for biosignatures, evidence that life is changing the atmosphere of the world that it's on, and how hard this might be to be sure. You can watch that video now.